hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my youtube channel and i am tarun and in this playlist we are already talking about nest.js graphql and we are going to finish this playlist before starting the new one and it's a long time since i haven't published a new video but this time my target is to finish up this playlist and talk about something brand new topic like swell.js and uh, writing microservices and developing the uber eats clone app which we were developing since last couple of days i didn't get much time sorry for that but now i will be uploading those videos and it will be fun writing all those apps okay so in this video we are going to talk about another example of nest.js graphql and typo rm and after that i'm going to cover nest.js graphql and prisma i mean both are equivalent prisma is now popular so people started exploring it Type ORM is something which is well established uh, stack and we are already using Type ORM, Mongoose, uh, different other type of query builders. So first finish up this, uh, then we will talk about Prisma. So this is all getting covered under the Nest.js GraphQL series because all are exposing the GraphQL APIs. Either it is uh, now we are using either Nest.js or the GraphQL. I'm going to add it into the master playlist. And the link will be in the description hi everyone so if we look into the code like what all i have covered the same code is already on the github repository in first couple of videos we talked about the pokemon app in which we were having create pokemon update pokemon and and assigning a league to a pokemon this is something which we have covered in the graphql this was the generated graphql schema we had and if you look into the Pokemon here, we have defined the .graphql files, which contains the types, queries, and the mutations, mutations for Pokemon and for the league. Okay, so this is, you can say a starter, 01. Now we are going to cover 02. So in this 02 folder, currently I have copied whatever we have on the 01, and then we will update the code in 02 folder. And what we are going to do, we are going to do authentication authorization at graphql layer like once you are logged in how we authorize the, the the mutations and queries all those things we are going to cover it's like you can say one more level down into nest.js graphql uh, with type orm and if you want to look into some existing examples which is talking about okay two type orm entities and how we can expose the queries and mutations so those examples are already here and rest all are empty folders which we will fill up while talking about these uh, stack like mongoose like prisma and here some uh, more example advanced example of the type ORM. okay uh, let's get started then in the code hi everyone so let's get started with the, another example uh, using nest.js graphql and type ORM. this was the first example we covered i wanted to talk about particular Two different approaches one is the schema first one is the code first okay when you look, look into the nest.js uh, graphql documentation you will understand there are two approaches it is providing code first and the schema first first we need to understand what are these two approaches and which particular approach this example is following okay so here we you can see we are using graphql module dot four root we are providing driver apollo driver and here we are providing type path dot graphql so if you look into these folders we are you can see dot graphql which is having this sdl syntax graphql type type definitions in the league and in the pokemon right so it is like a schema you are defining and based on that it is generating the final schema here dot schema dot ts this is auto generated but for this what are we feeding we are feeding this particular input we are feeding the type path so this is a schema first approach we are not writing the typescript annotations and typescript types for these graphql types but there is another approach which is code first approach in the code first approach you we are you we are going to use decorators and typescript classes to generate the corresponding graphql schema here this graphql schema we are generating based on this dot graphql files not based on the typescript decorators so this is known as a schema first approach we are actually using the so whenever you see the type path 
in the graphql module dot four root blindly you can say that this is the scheme of first approach you have defined a dot graphql files and it will auto generate the definitions in the schema graphql dot schema dot ts but when you don't see it that means we are using typescript annotations and types to generate the graphql schema dot ts so this example was talking about schema first approach okay in the schema first approach we were using type path and we were creating these uh, we were having this dot graphql module for each and every uh, entity modules like pokemon and pokemon league we were having these dot graphql files and finally we are generating the definitions in the graphql schema dot ts so what is the major difference here when we start using the code first approach so code first approach here we are actually using going to use object types path types all these uh, different types in, in our case so resolvers are still going to be there obviously obviously the resolvers and services the only difference here if i pull in the documentation they that would be more helpful like i guess so this is the code first approach in the code first approach what we are going to do is we are going to use object types this is what we were doing earlier in the schema first approach we were defining the types in the dot graphql files now this particular thing it will get converted into the typescript classes because we don't need to switch between the dot graphql files and the typescript if we are going to use code first approach we don't need to write it we can just write a simple model like author has a field so we are going to use object type and field which is coming from the nascs graphql okay all the typings are there field int boolean string object types so whatever you are defining in the dot graphql schema that will get converted into a es6 typescript class with types and the object types and fields these are the the annotations you have to use to tell okay this is representing the author graphql type having these three fields id first name last name and the post post is of type uh, array of post okay so now finally when the the above graphql class above class will get converted into this kind of a type so this is next js will generate it we are using field object types and all so similarly i mean you can define you can put more definitions more uh, information about using this field decorators like what is the deprecation region descriptions and what is the type here like let's say the posts is of type post array so they, we are using the array annotations the only difference we are doing here is we have added these fields rest it looks like a simple dto class okay so this is the approach we are going to adopt in this particular example here you can see uh, we have the post as an object type and it has all these three different fields so here we are going to first we are going to write these models and then we are going to write resolvers resolvers i don't see a major difference in writing a resolver either you use a code first or the schema first approach resolvers will be using your services to talk and fetch the data so like this is representing query it is returning author model author we have already defined like this is the post similarly we have author somewhere this is the author model so that query is returning author model that contains all the the required attributes and in the author model we have to resolve the posts post like uh, when we are getting a author then we also wanted to return all the post from the author so we have we wanted to resolve a particular field like, like posts in that case we have to pass the author id so we are resolving a particular field post for that we have to use it so resolver resolve field arguments all these are also annotations arguments like this can be a single uh, dto class or single variables of type int boolean string object and this is resolving a particular field in from the model so there are a lot of examples here like this query returns author so this will gets in indirectly gets converted into this sdl type query this is of type query and it is returning an author we can say it is returning an author and taking id as a integer input which is required 
okay so this is how it is going to work on so the query annotations here you can specify all these inputs and in the argument decorator here you can define argument a particular variable or a particular object type let's say this is get author which is taking id as an input here it is a create author i see it uh, like you wanted to specify this particular method is taking five arguments so in that case you can't keep writing okay first name last name instead of that you can create a get author argument this is the class argument type can have a multiple fields inside it okay so this is the argument type and all these fields are inside it so these are the annotations and once once we start using these these looks like dto model classes but with the object types and the field types are already defined and when it comes to a passing an argument in the simple nestjs services we are using dtos uh, and uh, we are applying pipes and dtos here also it is the same we are just creating a class and putting the argument type annotations and for the attributes we are using field okay so in this example we are going to use code first approach code first approach that means we are not going to write so here we are going to use code first approach that means we are not going to write a dot graphql files the type path we are not going to provide we are going to use object types fields and these typings and this is how we are going to create a classes and we'll use these annotations to automatically generate the schema file okay uh, let's get started for that